What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malt Activist and today, well, you've already seen the thumbnail, you've read the title. I am, of course, talking about the Yardbag Smoke Trails. <laughs> what? Before we begin the review, I'd like to welcome our first time uh, viewers. Thank you for clicking on that thumbnail. It's highly appreciated. This means you're interested in whiskey and this channel is all about whiskey. So, you know, if whiskey lists, whiskey reviews, whiskey vlogs, whiskey rants, and everything in between, if that's your cup of tea, wait, if that's your glass of whiskey, then this channel is the one for you. So please hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. And uh, well, we're all winners. To my returning viewers, thank you so much for your continued patronage. It means a lot to me. You guys are amazing and I love you. Okay, I've not been this excited about doing a whiskey review in a very, very, very long time. And it's because we have with us the Art Bag Smoke Trail. There you go. Oh, jeez. And you know what, this was, this was one of the hardest whiskeys to get my hands on. We sent scouts all over the world, we sent spies, we, you know, we said go, find, find this whiskey for me, no matter what the price, no matter what the cost. And those guys, uh, they, uh, they searched, they searched for this hidden treasure and one of them finally found it at Heathrow Airport for 67 pounds, that's right. For 67 pounds, he picked up this bottle for me, he landed. Um, he landed, I think, this early morning, sent me a message saying, hey, I have the smoke trails, do you want it? And in literally 20 minutes, it was in my hands. That's how, that's how motivated I was to get my hands on this whiskey. Yes, the Artbag smoke trails. Yes, and it's because, it's because I am an unashamed Artbag fanboy, so... <sighs> It is what it is, man. If they're going to put whiskeys out there, I'm going to go and try them and buy them. And you know what? Somebody needs to bite the bullet and it just might as well be me. So you know what? Just, just be happy that I do this. Just be happy that I spend my hard earned money, you know, uh, getting these whiskeys and telling you guys about them. So, you know, you can make informed decisions. And that's what this channel is all about, honestly. So, ha, huh. am I excited? Yeah, I am. I am super excited. Okay, cool. So, what do we know about this whiskey? We know this whiskey uh, is uh, 67 pounds. By the way, this is a one liter bottle. This is a one liter bottle. That means a liter bottle is going for 67 pounds. Okay, that would make it uh, a shade under 50 pounds for the normal 70 CL. I don't know if they're regular 70 CLs uh, out there or if it's they're all one liter bottles. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the size that they're selling at the distillery. I wrote into Jackie. She, I think she's traveling. She, she, she never responded. So I am not a hundred percent sure. All I do know is that at the duty free right now, we're getting one liter bottles at 67 pounds, which makes it roughly 50 pounds, uh, for a regular size 70 CL. Uh, this is bottled at 46% and it's a marriage of, uh, ex bourbon and Manzania casks. Uh, and yeah, there you go. That's that's what this whiskey is about. Cool. We of course don't know how long it's been aged. I'm going to guess anywhere between six and eight years, roughly. Uh, it is of course non-chill filtered and uh, no color added to this. So thank you, Artbag, for maintaining the integrity of this whiskey. Before we open this bottle, and by the way, it is a sealed bottle, there you go. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about Manzania uh, Sherry, in which uh, this whiskey is matured. Not all of it, uh, part of it, because uh, it's a marriage of two different styles of whiskeys, bourbon and Manzania uh, cask matured. Uh, so Manzania casks are a subset of Fino Sherry, okay, uh, made exclusively in Spain from the Pal Palomi from the Palomino? Yes, from the Palomino grape. I should have known that the first time around. Yes, from the Palomino grape. Uh, and it's it's a white sherry. It's a very uh, light colored sherry. And uh, the only difference between uh, the Manzania and the Fino, which is also made from Palomino, uh, is that the Manzania is a little more acidic. 
uh, than the Fino and Sherry. Uh, that's because the grapes, the Palomino grapes, are picked uh, much earlier as compared to Fino, so they're slightly more acidic. But apparently the main difference, the main difference is that uh, they're exclusively matured in the port of, and I'm going to have to read this, otherwise I will butcher this name completely. They have to be matured in bloody blood. Ooh, at the Spanish port of Sancula de Barameda. I think I pronounced that correctly. I've, I've put the name down uh, here for you guys to read. So it's sitting right next to the Atlantic Ocean, which means it gets a little salty and briny and has a, has a maritime uh, flavor to it, which is very similar to what most Isla whiskeys, especially art bags, boast about. So interesting that they would use the Manzania cask uh, to mature, uh, to, I mean, use this as part of this makeup of this whiskey, uh, knowing fully well that uh, not only is their spirit uh, quite maritime, so are the casks uh, that the Manzania is uh, matured in. So interesting, so I'm, I'm expecting a lot of sea salt in this. Also, this is not the first time that Artbeg has uh, experimented with Manzania cast. Uh, they actually put out a bottle back in 2013 for their facial release known as the Artbog. Yes, for, uh, for my uh, hardcore Artbeg fans, you know that the uh, Artbog is also a marriage of Manzania and uh, ex bourbon casks. Uh, the only difference is that this one is at 52.1%, if I am not mistaken. No, I'm not. Uh, and this whiskey is at least 10 years old. Yeah, so this is a mix of minimum 10 year old whiskey, which is, I'm surprised they didn't put that on the label. So definitely, I think the age on the smoke trail is going to be lesser than the art bog. We'll do a side by side right at the end just to see what the differences are like. But in the meantime, I think I am ready, as I'm sure you are too, to get this thing underway. All right, let's go. Let's go, baby. First time opening. Yes, smells like an art bag. Let's put it in our glass. Check this out. This is non chill filtered, this is non colored. Woo, this is super intense, quite sharp. Lemon, lime, vanilla. Very, very maritime, very salty, fishnets. But there's a brightness to it, there's a sharp, acidic brightness to it. Which I think is the result of the Manzania cask. Quite intense, quite intense. There's a nuttiness uh, to this as well. A little doughy. Wow, very sharp. Very sharp nose. Very interesting. Does it seem young? Um, maybe a touch young, I don't, but not super, super young. Not wee beastie young, I don't think. But there's certainly a sharpness or tartness to it uh, that I guess can only come from um, uh, from younger whiskies, but I think the younger whiskies uh, compounded uh, with uh, being married uh, with whiskies from Manzania cost is making this even more tart, uh, even more acidic. Yeah, so you know um, the the uh, the traditional distillery uh, distillery aromas uh, definitely on the nose for me. Just very signature, very signature art bag. The peat starts off quite strong, but then gets a little subdued, smoky as well. And a definite sweetness in here also. Wow, it's quite interesting. Definitely definitely lets you know that this is an Isla whiskey and that this is from Artbeg because of the signature flavor profiles. You know, it again, you know, it takes me back to the island and I'm happy to know this as long as it takes me back to the island. I like it. I like the nose. Um, even though I feel it's a little, little too sharp, a little too acidic, slightly tart than I would have liked, but you know what, I, it's, it's working for me. 
And the more I think about it, the more I feel that the Manzania cars are really sort of coming into play over here. By the way, the, the Manzania Sherry is a very pale white, white Sherry. So there's almost no f uh, color being imparted through the, uh, through the cask into the whiskey. So this is what you get. Hints of like limestone and uh, there's a uh, soft minerality to it as well, which I like. Yeah, some oatmeal also in there. So again, that bread, doughy, oatmeal flavor profile coming through. So there you go. You know, I I like the nose. Mm, it's it's uh, it's quite aggressive uh, in a fun way. Almost no uh, alcohol burn, even though it's quite tart. But there's no alcohol burn, if you know what I mean. I think at 46%, what do you expect? <sighs> And the longer it sits, the more I feel that, you know, it, it takes on the signature distillery uh, flavors uh, on the nose. And uh, I like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Whoa. So far, I'm liking it, guys. So far, I'm really liking it. I'm, of course, also biased. And like I said, an unashamed Ardbeg fanboy. So these are the flavors that get me. You know, they get me. So take that with a pinch of salt, please. Okay, I guess there's nothing left for me to do, but dance. Mm. Wow, <laughs> this is awesome. This is so good. You know why? Because it delivers on the palate. That's right, it's not just the nose. The mouthfeel is medium. <clears throat> ah, still here, still here. The mouthfeel is medium to full. It's not syrupy syrupy, but it's definitely not on the thin side. It coats your palate beautifully. Oh, and that finish, mm. Yes. Um, quite ashy, nutty, um, salty, lots of brine. But again, a sweetness from the pineapple, the sweetness from the citrus uh, coming through very, very strongly. The lemon and the lime are there. Um, very oily, even though I expected it to be dry, but it's not, it's quite oily. I have saliva running all around my mouth. My, my, my palate is super oily and wet right now. Um, Ooh, uh, and, and some white and black peppers in there as well. But very, very maritime, very salty, very briny, but with an overall sweetness uh, that I really like in Ardbeg whiskeys. And, and I think it's one of, one of the more balanced whiskeys uh, that I've had of late, you know, with, uh, it can't just be salty and savory and ashy and sooty. It needs the sweetness uh, to come through as well. Nice and, uh, you know, nice and evenly balanced. And I think this whiskey does that for me. Oh, mm. delicate sweetness, perfect mouthfeel. And that finish, it stays on you for eons. It just stays and it stays and it stays and it doesn't go anywhere. Ah. Oh, this is, this is a great drinking experience, guys. I think Artbag have hit it out of the park, man. Honestly, and this I'm not saying because I'm an Artbag fanboy, which I am. I'm just telling you, this is a fantastic dram. This is an absolute stunning, stunning whiskey which I think they've hit it out of the park. Oh my word. I absolutely love it. Jesus. So what does it say? It says um, uh, salty sea spray, nuttiness and saddle soap. A, a marriage of American oak and uh, Manzania sherry casks. Uh, this is batch number SB dash, whatever that means, bloody, bloody, blah. blah. Distillery manager, Colin Gordon. Congratulations, Mr. Colin Gordon, for putting this whiskey out under your watch. Uh, I met Colin when I was in Isla this year. Absolute, like, fantastic guy. Uh, love his energy, love his enthusiasm, and he's truly, I think, grateful um, uh, to being uh, a part of Artbag. And you know what? If this is one of the things, if these are the kind of things that he's gonna put out, then, you know, uh, I my vote is for Colin Gordon. Uh, to stay on as distillery manager for a very, very, very long time. So well done, Colin. Uh, you've hit this one out of the park and congratulations to all the team. And I rarely do this. I rarely do this, 
in reviews. I'm pouring myself a second glass. I never do that. I normally drink the whiskey and then uh, whatever's left, I put it back in the glass because I don't want to drink too much. But this, I just poured myself a second dram. Oh! Yes! That mouthfeel is even more creamy, is even more luscious, even more viscous. Mmm! Coats my palate beautifully. It's, it's really like drinking a perfectly balanced whiskey, in my opinion. Well done, smoke trails! Woohoo! You know the real reason I'm like super happy and excited is because every time I sit down with a sense of optimism and hope, uh, a whiskey lets me down. But this time around, it's not. It's not even just average. I think this is a well, well above average whiskey. Beautifully constructed. Oh my, my word, I'm so happy that they've, they've, they've put out this product, which is, which is like available to everybody in travel retails, not just at the distilleries and not just at specialist shops, uh, at airports all around the world, which means anyone uh, can get their hands on it, which is uh, amazing because if you can get your hands on whiskeys like this at this price, right? So uh, it's, it's 67 pounds for a liter, uh, which is about 50 pounds for a 70 CL. That just means it's beautifully priced, in my opinion. I think that's fantastically priced. And you're getting this, this quality, this level of whiskey that is very, very, very hard to find. So, I'm going to give this a 9A+. One of, one of my favorite whiskeys that I've had this year. Uh, and I'm glad I had it before the year ended. This is a contender for my whiskey of the year. I love it. It's gorgeous. Get it. If you're going, if you're traveling through Heathrow or the, any one of the UK airports right now, get your hands on it, please. Uh, uh, but if you don't, that's not a problem because on the 1st of November, it's going to be there all over the world. So, well done. So happy about this. Woohoo! A good whiskey from Art Bank. It tastes good. It's one to one liter bottle. We can drink this all day. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You showed us the art bog. Yes, sitting right here. Here's the art bog. There you go. A little dusty, cause you know, I just dusted it. There you go. Don't see my face, there it goes. A little dusty. I pulled it off the shelf. I, I've, I've stopped cleaning my shelves, cause you know, I like that little dusty look. But let's pour ourselves a dram off the art bog. Oh, which by the way is definitely Definitely darker than the than the smoke trails. There you go. Oh my word! There for for whiskey that is very very similar in maturation. This is a massive massive difference in in color. Uh, given that they're both uh, natural colored whiskeys, so I can only think that. And uh, the whiskeys in the art bog, uh, I think were first filled bourbon and matured for longer, hence a greater transfer of color and then compounded with uh, maybe uh, a longer matured Manz uh, Manzania uh, cask whiskeys, again compounding the color and hence getting this rather gold-ish, bronze-ish dark color as compared to the, yeah, as compared to the much lighter straw white wine Chardonnay type of color that you find on the smoke trails. Um, so I'm thinking more second filled bourbon, younger uh, for this whiskey and uh, more first filled bourbons and older for the Art Bog, which is this whiskey, as you can see for yourself. Oh, these look, wow, these look night and day, night and day. So very interesting that these two whiskeys are so different in color. Even on the nose, the, the art bog is a lot more, it seems like a lot more sherry driven, almost like an Oloroso PX sherry driven. It has more chocolate, it has more uh, stewed red fruits. And a leather and tobacco, which makes me think, is this, should it have Oloroso and PX cast or something in here? 
but it doesn't say it doesn't say so you know the the literature is very very clear that these are ex bourbon barrels uh, married with uh, ex uh, manzania sherry cask so this color and the nose is their worlds apart uh, so I don't know I don't know what they've done I I I think I'm going to write into Jackie, who's the chairman of the Artbag committee and head of the vis visitor center over at Artbag, and uh, get get her views on this, and I'll share them with you. In the meantime, let's uh, let's take a sip of this. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Ooh, man, I forgot how good this whiskey was. Yeah, beautiful mouthfeel. Uh, very chocolate raisin, uh, nutmeg, maybe some hints of cinnamon as well. Um, so, uh, does it seem like it's a Manzania cask uh, uh, matured uh, combination of whiskeys? It seems very, uh, you know, red sherry driven, like Oloroso or PX, but, and, and that's sort of confusing me. Um, it could be the very, very active first fill bourbon barrels uh, that uh, that this whiskey has. So that's something I'm, I, I need to check with the distillery, but, um, yeah, so these two whiskeys are not alike at all under any circumstances. Uh, even though they're almost the same maturation, maybe slight slight difference in age, uh, and I suspect uh, a definite um, difference in uh, cask type. So the bourbon cask I feel could be second and uh, maybe some third filled and even the Manzania cask could be second and third filled. So I wouldn't be surprised if these are leftover casks from the art bog. <gasps> oh my word, you know what? I could be right. I could be right. I think this is just a, this is just a theory. I could be completely wrong, but I think uh, when they bottled the art bog, they had these Manzania casks lying around. So now they're second fill Manzania casks. So they're like, hey, what should we do with them? They're like, let's rechar them uh, and we'll fill up some spirit and then we'll see what happens in about eight, nine years. Let's see what happens. And then exactly eight, nine years later, oh, they come out with, a, with another whiskey called the Smoke Trails and guess what? <gasps> It's part matured in Manzania casks. Is that a coincidence? Art bag, you need to answer some questions. We have, we have, we need answers. Art bag. Ah, is this from the art bog legacy? Is this the bastardized child of the art bog? Ah, there's a fan theory you didn't think you'd hear on this channel, did you? That's interesting. So this is what I think has happened. Of course, there's no literature to confirm this. This is what I think has happened. In 2013 for the fish aisle, they emptied some Manzania cask and they mixed it, mixed it with some very active first fill bourbon cask and they came up with the art bog at 52.1%, minimum 10 years of aging in that whiskey. And then, you know what I think happened? They put some new make spirit in the same Manzania cask, which are now second fill Manzania casks. And then they said, Eight, nine years later, we'll, we'll, we'll bottle something, we'll figure out what to call it, and they call it the Smoke Trails. By the way, because the mouthfeel is very similar. Ooh, fennel. Hmm. Ooh. Chocolates. I don't know. I don't know what's happened, but something has happened, and I think they're related. I think... <laughs> this is <laughs> this is what happens. This is this is the this is the this is the interracial child of this whiskey. Yes, this is the bastardized interracial child uh, of the art box. This is my theory. This is what I think has happened. I don't know. I could be completely wrong, but you know what? I think that's a fun fan theory. And I will reach out to Arbeg and uh, and see if they corroborate it. If they do, then this is this is where you heard it first at the Malt Activist headquarters. Man, so happy about this review. So happy that we got this whiskey in our hands. So happy that it's good. So happy that I could share it with you. And I'm extremely ecstatic that we are the only Smoke Trails whiskey review on YouTube out right now. 
Come on! <laughs> yes! I love my job. I love everything about what I do. And it's thanks to you that I do what I do. So please, please consider joining. Please consider becoming a member to the channel. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, it, it'll just help me uh, put out more videos, uh, get more whiskeys to review, get more first time whiskeys to review, so that you can make informed decisions. That's it, that's it. That's all I care about. So thank you, thank you so much for being a part of this amazing whiskey review. Um, no, not that the review was amazing, I meant that the whiskey was amazing. So amazing whiskey review, yes. Uh, so thank you, thank you for being a, being a part of this journey. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you to all my first time viewers. You guys are absolutely amazing. Please consider subscribing and sharing and liking this video and hitting that bell icon and all the good stuff. And do consider uh, becoming members as well. Um, uh, I have like uh, a cool exclusive content only for members, uh, even down on my Patreon as well. So thank you. Thank you everybody. And this has been an amazing day and I'm so glad uh, that I'm here for this. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm the Malta Activist. Until next time.